This week, David, we're comparing two SUVs of a similar size, a similar-ish price bracket, though there is a little bit of a creep on one of them. What are we uh, reviewing? We have a Skoda Kamiq as one. A Jeep Compass. We're going to start with the looks, David. These are two very, very different looks. This one is uh, a little bit lower set than the Jeep, and it's delicious light arrangement. I really think that looks quite beautiful. And much more modern than the Jeep. Yeah, that just is, is incredibly lovely. It's got, excuse the birds, it's got the Skoda emblem, place for the radar cruise control. I think that looks quite smart. We've got built-in roof rails on both of them. And this has got quite a squarish back with this typical kind of Skoda look on the lights. David, do you want to do the honours? They've both got electric boot openings. Forgive the timber in the back of there. Now, what I like about this is the button to close is up here. You'll see why that's an issue in a minute. Inside, we've got a couple of clever storage solutions. We've got David's uh, firewood. And underneath, both of them have... The easy to get to well, spare there's time. There's a little tab there. Oh, okay, my, my for, firewood doesn't help. For a spare tire, <laughs> indeed. For a spare tire and the six uh, seats go down 60-40 split. And there's a hard cover here. Hey, I got into it quite easily. I've got a bit of room here. Plenty of room for your feet. That's what I like to get them in and out. Some of those cars you really struggle with. Yeah. You've got, uh, uh, what, uh, three, four inches of knee room. Uh, you've got some vents there at the back, David. I, uh, yes, and I have heated seats. Certainly in this model. Now, can, keep in mind that not all models will have these features. Do you have any USB outlets in the back? No. No USB, David, that's a big mark down. See, can I got into that quite easily? I've been doing my stretching, maybe you that have, helps. You have, you have. There's electric seats, of course, in this as well, with lumbar support, which I quite like. Obviously, if the rear seats are heated, the front seats are too. You've got a digital dash. You've got uh, quite a large entertainment screen and a very, very neat centre console. Uh, and you do have automated parking. Hmm. So they both, both cars have automated parking. Once again, Volkswagen have, they've been a little bit naughty. They've scrimped out on a little bit of the plastic. Here on the back door, that's quite hard. On the front door, that's very soft with a beautifully patterned insert. And the rest of the dash is also quite soft. Nice. Instrumentation, I absolutely adore these. I think that just looks absolutely gorgeous. The start bit is down here on the, you know, where your key would normally go. A nice, simple console separate aircon controls which i like a lot and of course below controls for parking and the parking sensors etc the lights are much more slimline you've still got uh, daytime running lights up top the lights are more slimline but what looks like a grill isn't that's actually solid let's move around the side david what do you think of the side this uh, looks a bit like trying to be tough with a sort of almost tack on, you know, square yeah, thing over the wheels. I oh. mean, I, I think it looks absolutely delicious. And what I think looks particularly delicious are these wheels. Okay. They look fantastic in that sort of graphite look. Uh, you'll also notice that, as we said, this is a four by four. There's a flat floor there, David. Underneath, there is a spare. The seats go down 40, 40, 20. And again, there's a hard parcel shelf. And as I just said about the other car, this, uh, I think, really helps not only shield your grocery and vegetable, but it also helps with that booming noise that you do get from big back areas. Now, the other thing is the really weird placement. David, look, try, try and put it down. I mean, there's this little okay. cute, there's this cute little Jeep symbol there that I thought was the button. No, no, look where the button is, David. In the bloody side. I mean, why? Nice wide opening door to you, that's almost 90 degrees. Again, okay, Alan, and, and, and good solid support under here, room looks under the good. seat. Look, you've got USBs, you've got a C and a, a, a normal USB. In We've also seat. got quite a few of these power points down here, including a household, household plug. How's your headroom? Uh, given that we have a 
a top that I can a look through. Roof, yeah. The one. difference is that this one opens, whereas this one doesn't. Now in the front, David is now behind the camera, similar soft materials, and again, a infotainment system that sticks up. I like the controls on this one better. You'll notice that you've also got parking assist on this one and a clear outline of buttons across the bottom. I like the fact that there are separate controls. There are also, because this is an off-road version, allegedly, there are some off-roading controls. There are the normal controls across the steering wheel, but as with all Chrysler type vehicles, they've got controls on the back of either side of the steering wheel, which I'm, to be honest, not so fussed on. The overhead console on this is quite nice, and you'll see that, like the other car, this has got some controls up here for the sunroof. One of the first things I want to mention, David, is wireless CarPlay. Yes. So presumably Android Auto as well? Yes, I believe so. I can't quite get completely comfortable no. in this. I've, I've tried a couple of times to put the seat up, put the seat down. You can change the dash view. The, th uh, the thing about the dash view I love is you have options with minimal information. What do you think about the ride? Uh, pretty good. Now, I noticed on the way out this morning, the cruise control, it's active cruise control, or normal cruise control, that's a little please some of our friends. Hmm. I like the way that it was easy to set and easy to get at. The transmission in this, it's very smooth. Mm -hmm. Very, very smooth. This is the 2.4 petrol. You've also driven the diesel. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is um, delightful. I think it's uh, absolutely delightful. Not a lot of talk. Ah, it's not a turbo petrol. 2.4 litre sounds big, but it's not turbo. So it has 129 kilowatts, but only 229 newton metres. But the diesel engine, two litre diesel, that you can get only in the Trailhawk, is 350 newton metres, yeah. uh, slightly less, 125 kilowatts. Alan, you would say that the paint job has a certain gay abandon about it. It does. The, this is the most beautiful shade of metallic black I've ever seen in my life. With it, sparkles. It's got sparkles. I, I, I couldn't believe it. And they're not just all the one colour sparkle. They're rainbow sparkles. I think that's wonderful. So we've just been in the Jeep, Dave. Immediately I'm liking the dash on this with its minimal information that you've set up. I, of course, would have it with more complex information. Two things, Alvin. It, it has all that I really need in driving along generally is speed. It's got the range, or, yeah, maybe. But the other thing is they're big numbers. Sometimes they cramp so much into a dashboard that it's like reading the bottom line of an eye chart. You raise a good point. The numbers were very small in the Jeep. It does encourage you, and being of the old school, it's taken me a while to get to even think about, let's do voice. And well, that's David, they the don't have slates and slate pencils <laughs> in cars, so really they can't, can't go back to when you and I were at school. <laughs> but what I would say is this, uh, CarPlay, is this wireless or wired? No, wireless. So wireless CarPlay in both. And by going to Google, you're going to a voice actuated system that has been affected a trillion times, that has been developed. What David's saying is it uses the hive mind. But again, coming from a man that learnt on slates and pencils, you know, perhaps you'd like a good old card system. Now, the, my point I make about the voice actuation is it's fantastic if it works. I've got to say, the ride in this is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, um, and can I say the driving, look at this, I'm more, much more comfortable. In mm. fact, I would have to seat back a little way, but I've still got room to the still, drive it. Yeah. This still has seat heating in the front, so we're not completely without uh, great off-road. David, I think the, the, this whole car is probably closer to a hatch than an SUV, whereas the yeah. Jeep definitely is closest to being yep. uh, an SUV. I love the way this drives. This drives, this drives like a hatch. Mm. Now it is only a front wheel drive, mm. uh, but 110, 
110 kilowatts. 110 I mean. kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque. It is a turbo, so it gets more torque than the non-turbo compass, the base model compass. Yeah. But it also gets it lower down too, which I think is rather helpful. Well, there's a couple of other things. My cruise control controls are down here on the stalk. The cruise control split in two. Now remember, all Volkswagen Group cars, as they're being rolled out to be renewed, are getting travel assist. Mm. Ask me what travel assist is, David. Alan, what's travel assist? That's the group name for all of the driver assist programs that you can put on on the highway. So it's active cruise control, the lane centering and lane departure. Uh, plus all of the other driver aids. So that one you turn on with that one main button. Isn't it interesting that they're combining it together? And of course, to set the cruise control, you've got to press this little button on the end. You don't just push up or down. Ah, unless you press this button. If you press that button, it sets everything at whatever speed it is. The steering of this car feels sharper, I've got to say. But I thought I'd notice a massive difference between the 2.4 in the Jeep and the 1.4 in this, and I don't. And obviously it's because this is a turbo, even though there is a slight power difference. Just a final word. I very much like this dashboard as well. I like this set out. And I like the fact that this is slightly lower than the Jeep's one. The Jeep's mm. set quite high. We've now had the uh, both to compare both cars. The other one is more expensive, but it does have more stuff. And the range has more stuff, as I said, you can only get uh, a two wheel drive. I suppose it's come down to the pointy end, which is which car do you prefer? I prefer to drive this one. It's you know, simply because I can sit more comfortably in it, I, and I'm very happy with the, the, the level of features and the way it drives. Um, I would prefer to have all-wheel drive, not to go off-road, but to grip in the wet. Um, but uh, in essence, I'm, I'm more comfortable in this vehicle. Um, I think I'm more comfortable in this too. And I didn't think I'd say that because the other car has more gears, the other car has uh, more power, it drives more wheels. Uh, I just prefer this. Maybe it's because I've driven more VW Group cars than I have uh, Fiat Chrysler cars hmm. over the period. Maybe it's because I'm used to this, I don't know. But All there right. you have it, on that bombshell. Horses for courses. <laughs> the only thing horse-like about either of us, I think. <laughs> on that bombshell, the, v the VW Group car, the Skoda Kamiq, seems to have won the day. Not, it, by, not by a country mile, but no, it no. seems to have won the day. Uh, so, David, it's at this time when we normally say... Goodbye. And don't forget to leave a comment. <laughs> it's hard to get good help. <laughs> Hit like yep. and over there, I think, to subscribe. <laughs>